So, Marilyn, thanks for taking the time to speak to us. First of all, how are you and your family uh, doing at the moment? Yeah, um, all good. Um, keeping busy and uh, trying to keep the routine. So encouraging people around me to do likewise. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's all good at the moment. Thank you. Uh, and obviously, you know, coronavirus has, has affected all, all areas of uh, the, the business. Um, football's not operating, the hotel's shut. And um, I imagine, although the set will get onto it, the set's probably doing more than most at the moment. Um, it has obviously impacted what, what, what the Sport and Education Trust are trying to do as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we I would say um, with coronavirus, um, lots has changed in terms of what we offer in the business. And there's certain things obviously we can't do, like our football offer. Um, but that, what that's done is encourage the staff team to get really creative about how it keeps participants occupied. And uh, we've been using lots of online sort of coaching courses. Um, we've got Google Classrooms going on. Lots of feedback has been great from parents that are talking about how it's kept their uh, yeah, young people in the family busy and occupied and also their skill development continuing during the lockdown. Um, we, um, we, we're really heavily involved in the community. We're, we're doing over uh, 500 parcel deliveries uh, for vulnerable adults in the community. We run a food larder on a Friday, so we've had over 400 boxes go out to local people looking for some extra food support. Um, and we're doing absolutely loads of phone calls for, for all of our participants, making sure they're okay, that they've got somebody to talk to, that they're not needing additional support in the community. I think it was 1,400 calls we've done in the last three weeks. Um, and we've also had uh, 144,000 impressions on our Twitter site. So there's loads of information going out and about around what we're doing and loads of challenges for people to get involved in. Everything from new skills to learn to um, sort of getting involved in pancake tossing and anything that you can think of the set team are up to at the moment to keep people um, busy and, and thinking about the positives about what we can do coming back beyond this COVID situation rather than um, in a sense thinking about being in a sense isolated in their own homes so there's still the family is set around them to kind of keep uh, offering that support. Oh you touched on it I think fortunately you know there's a, there's a lot of people out there that are able to isolate with their families at the moment um, and being able to spend some quality times with their loved ones but there are unfortunate people that you know potentially aren't at home or are away from their families maybe because their you know their parents are essential workers etc so um you know, the set's always there for the people of Milton Keynes before coronavirus. And I suppose it's even more important now that the, the Sport and Education Trust is, is there for people um, through this. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're doing campaigning as well online and making sure that people are respecting each other and thinking about their own mental welfare and, and health and well-being, getting them involved in PE sessions and physical activity um, set sessions as well. So we're all keeping our minds and bodies occupied and active. Um, but we're, we're always there at the end of a, a, a phone line or if people are really struggling and want to kind of see somebody, we can arrange to um, have a conversation at a distance to, through our social distancing at the, the set bus on a Friday as well. So there's lots of ways that you can still keep you involved in, in what we're doing at set uh, without physically having to come into the stadium. Mm -hmm. um, we'll touch on the food line. Obviously, uh, uh, you know, we've, we've seen that being um, posted every Friday. Can you just talk about how that idea came about um, and, ha and how you're implementing that every Friday? Yeah, we've been in conversation with an organisation called Sophia, who are based just across the road from the stadium for a while, about setting up a food larder within, within the stadium uh, on a regular basis for people who needed access to a food bank. And then coronavirus came along and it felt like we needed to do something not just for the wider community but also for our stadium employees we have a lot of staff who are furloughed themselves and may well be struggling so we um we, we escalated the conversation with um sophia and um, decided to use our bus which is in the car park of the stadium as a venue to come and collect the box just to kind of start the ball rolling now but we intend to continue this beyond uh, the lockdown and once we're able to reaccess the stadium have a weekly um drop in where people can come and get some information advice and guidance about employment or courses that I might be able to get involved in but also pick up some food as well uh, to kind of help them along with uh, what's going on with their families so um, that's how it started it's part of the food share network network um, and as I said we've kind of distributed over about 500 boxes so far since we, since the lockdown amazing and, and how do people who maybe are in need of of, of a food parcel how, how would they go about getting in touch or, or coming to, to come to collect one 
the simplest way is literally just come down on a Friday between 10 and 12. Um, you just fill in a very simple membership form. There's no cost to this at all at the moment. Um, and you, you just ask for your, your name and your address so that we can keep a, a log of uh, just how vast um, or how diverse the needs are across the city. And if there's any kind of um, hotspot areas that we might need to put on a specific um, bank down in, in a community. Um, that information is kept confidentially. Um, and but then it's a case of just collecting the box on a Friday each week. Obviously, we're still waiting to hear what what will happen with the with the with the men's senior team um, in terms of football resuming. The women's team, unfortunately, their season has come to an end. Um, can I get your, your your thoughts on that? But also, um, they've been staying busy, haven't they? Um, interacting with uh, with supporters. Yeah, absolutely. It's a real shame that the women's um, season has now come to close. We're in a couple of cup um, finals and things and actually really progressing well within the league. Um, so it was a year of consolidation in terms of this league for, for the, uh, the women's team, but um, hopefully building for a really strong season next season. Um, the women's team have been fantastic. They've been involved in lots of our challenge sessions and including an A to Z of fruit and vegetables at the moment. They're doing as with a just giving page uh, to collect money for the NHS. Um, lots of challenges involving mangoes and cucumbers and avocados and things where people have to be creative about how they're using them. So I'd say that every part of the business is doing something for the community of Milton Keynes. And I think that that needs to be valued and, and respected as well, that uh, nobody's sitting back and saying it's not my job, not my role. They're all getting involved in whatever way they can, whether it's um, lockdown in our homes or they're out and about in the community um, supporting some of the key workers. They're, they're, they're doing all sorts of things. I'm looking forward to seeing what they've got for X in the uh, food A to Z. That would be a Me ten. too. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to have zucchini for Z. I can't think of anything else we could use. <laughs> the CEO sleep out. Um, some supporters probably be aware of something that, that John Cove did early in, this, early in the year that happened at our stadium. Um, this is a lockdown version of uh, the CEO sleep out. So uh, can you just talk people through what that will be and what you'll be doing? Yeah, literally on the 1st of June, um, I will be sleeping in my garden. I'm going to have to let my neighbours know, just so they can work out what this um, this wacky person is doing in the garden on a on an evening. And I'm hoping for warm weather, but I've got a feeling that it's not going to be. The idea is that we raise as much money as possible that recognises that there are a lot of people who are homeless or are rough sleeping um, during this time to kind of recognise that and how difficult it is for them. Um, alongside that, raising some money for Milton Keynes Don set as part of the process as well. So um, I'm sacrificing my warm, cosy bed. Um, I'm trying to encourage my dogs to join me, but I think it's me outside in the garden on the 1st of June uh, to try and raise some money both uh, for those two causes. Um, and uh, I know this is kind of a national event and there's gonna be lots of other people gonna be doing the same. Um, but uh, it, it just felt like um, in November, I wasn't able to do it, but, uh, and John took, took the um, position forward for the set but um, it's my time to do this and an opportunity for me to kind of join in that, that campaign as well. I saw in your note that you're asking people to send in some recommendations about how to keep you busy because you're not expecting much much sleep. What, what <laughs> What's the limits? What, what, uh, how far would you go or, or what, what are you looking for people to suggest? <laughs> I think that it's about my limits are about what I can physically um, do, to be honest. Um, I think the, the biggest limit will be I don't really want to upset my neighbours, um, but yeah. um, um, I'm up for a challenge during the evening. I don't think that I will get much sleep. So things that keep me occupied for the uh, 12 hours that I'll be outside in the garden. Um, uh, singing a song probably will be painful for other people to hear, but um, I'm willing to have a go at anything if people are willing to donate. But we'll put information of that on the MK Dons website, mkdons.com, and I know it'll be on the set website and channels as well. So I'm sure people will find out how they can they get in touch. But uh, but definitely good good luck with that. Um, Thank you. <laughs> coming back to the you know the food line, you talk about it's also an opportunity for people to kind of talk um, and get through the needs. What what's what's the vibe you're getting from from people who are coming and speaking? What what's the vibe in the community at Milton Keynes? Imagine um, imagine the topic of conversation is probably football um, and, and MK Dons. How, how are people in Milton Keynes feeling at the moment from, from what you've experienced? I think um, the, the overwhelming thing is that they are really missing the football. Um, desperate to know if and when it might be coming back. Um, and I think it's, it's part of the normal for Milton Keynes. People you know, are passionate about the game, but also about um, kind of what, what MK Dons and MK Dons set represents across the community beyond the, the game of football as well. 
Um, so I think there's there's a lot of interest in that. Lots of um, people are very isolated. It, it comes across um, during the food bank. Um, we've had people where we've delivered food who haven't seen anybody for several weeks. Um, in fact, some of the team have gone out gardening um, the last week for a, an elderly person in the 90s who, who couldn't get out into his garden and couldn't actually make those changes. So as a, as a result of being involved in things like the emergency food deliveries and food banks, we've identified lots of other ways that we can help and support the community. So um, I think the overwhelming thing is people are, are holding in there in terms of recognising they need to kind of keep in lockdown and, and actually protect themselves and others, um, but also to the NHS as well, but and key workers. Um, but overwhelmingly, they're keen to get back to a form of normal where they can socialize, interact with others, and they're really missing that in Milton Keynes. Um, as, as a chief executive of the set and somebody who works in the community, I mean, this must you know it's such a tough time but i suppose this is this is kind of the time where you know it's so similar to the nhs in some expect that you know while we always appreciate the nhs it's only really at a time like this do you really fully understand the work that goes on and um you know while it is important to point out that you do a lot of this 365 days a year it's at times like this that you know it's important to give an opportunity for you to to highlight what you're doing and what, what the set does for milton Keynes. Yeah, I mean, it's really important. I mean, I think uh, the more I talk, uh, people I've talked to and organisations I've talked to over this little time during COVID, um, I think there's still a lot of people in Melbourne Kings who don't fully understand the breadth of the work that we do at the set. Um, and that football is probably a third of our work in terms of supporting from grassroots through to the academy structure and, and uh, everything between that, uh, both the girls and the boys. Um, but beyond that, we, we offer a whole range of education and employment programmes. We, we work with the National Citizen Service, so we're working with over 300 young people across Milton Keynes um, on a yearly basis. We also support um, two thirds of the disability football for the region, so we, we have a huge um, mechanism of support there for people with disabilities and minority communities as well. So alongside that we do over 800 sessions in schools every every year we have over 7,000 sessions across our business um, and work with over 52,000 people across Milton Keynes and that grows every year so we, um, we're quite busy even though we're a relatively small team um, but uh, not just football and that's the message I think is that we, we're here to support the whole community all ages all abilities and football is one of those mechanisms that we use to do that. Super and so moving forward, then um, your message to, to people would be to, to you know to log on to the MK on set website, I'd imagine, and Twitter, and, uh, and stay in touch. I know I know the the coaches have still got some fun sessions planned, uh, so um, keep an eye on that. Would, would that be your message? Absolutely. Um, get involved in the sessions. Have a go at some of the challenges. Get in touch. Let us know what you're up to. Um, if there's things that you want to challenge us, there's this platform to do that through our Twitter and our Facebook sites as well, um, and also lots of learning opportunities as well. So um, keep safe and um, get involved in what MPSET's about.